Well, good afternoon. Um, I could say good morning, good evening, right? Depending on where you are. Um, always good to have you guys there. Um, I am. I was actually planning to do this presentation from Italy, but today I ended up having to turn around and I'm now doing it from our headquarters here in Salt Lake City, Utah, which is probably okay. Makes it a little bit easier and I'm not up as late. Um, we are going to be going over the uh, 101, kind of the basics of Domotes. A lot of this, I think, maybe some of you will have seen, but it's good to get a refresher. It's also good to understand some of the details about how to set up your account and some of the, I guess I'd say, ideal ways of onboarding. Uh, before we get into this and while people are still joining, because I still see we have some attendees coming online, I always like to go over some of the basics. This is live. We've got guys standing by. Um, I always invite Giancarlo, our CTO, to interrupt me um, and bring up any questions. Uh, to ask questions, because this is a webinar and you guys are muted, uh, take advantage of that GoToWebinar control panel. Um, as I said, we'll try to get to the questions during that, but um, if we don't, we'll get to them at the end. If there are technical questions, you can always reach out to support at domotes.com as well. I also want to point out that if you have maybe more business related questions, or you have questions about uh, licensing and things of that nature, you can reach out to sales at domotes.com as well. So let's go get ahead and get started. Uh, some of these slides have been changing, uh, which I like, but they are not necessarily my slides. They're owned by somebody else, but I will do my best to read through them and get through this with you guys. Um, we'll talk a lot about what is Domotes, how it works. Uh, we'll get into some of the account management side. This is really more about the team members, field operators, and what that means. And then we'll address some of the licensing and activation things. Some of this you may have already been familiar with it. That's why I said at the beginning, this may be a slight review, but I wanna go over it because it's an important part of the onboarding process and how uh, Domotes works. We will then get into a lot of the features of Domotes. I'll try to do some demos, but then we'll touch on um, some of the more finer points of the features, really the things you need in my mind to get started. You know, how do we do asset discovery? How do you set up uh, properties within each device if that's what you'd like to do or need to change? We'll then talk about alerting as well as uh, connectivity into these systems. And that's how we'll kind of finish up. At the end, uh, we'll go over what we'll talk about in the 201 webinar where we get into a little bit more of it, the advanced topics. That being said, let's first and foremost talk about what is Domotes and how it works. Uh, Domotes is in several different markets. Uh, we are in the managed service provider space. So anybody that wants to use tools to help manage multiple clients, uh, Domotes is a multi-tenant platform for that. We also are in uh, spaces like IT departments, enterprise IT. We're in commercial integration spaces and integration in general that's out there. The ways in which these different markets use us um, it really boils down into these kind of three major categories. Domotes first and foremost gets used for asset management, right? Understanding what are all the network-based assets, not just the PCs, laptops, and servers, but what does the network infrastructure look like? What are all the devices that are connected to that network? One of the things you will see that we do really well with Domotes, and I'd say uh, better than anybody in the industry, when we discover a MAC address at the layer two level, right? So the VLAN layer, um, we will classify that device as best as we can by make, model, and type. And we'll talk about how we do that. But because of the way in which we classify things, it really helps you guys get a really good understanding of the inventory or the enterprise assets that are on the networks. We then go into the network management side of things, which for us, this is our core value. We will monitor and manage these networks effectively. We discover the networks. We look at firewalls, routers, wireless access points, any sort of gateway that may be in the system. And not only will we classify those, like I said before, but we will interrogate those systems. And you'll see how we do that in some of the demo or parts of the demo. Ultimately, what we're trying to do is build a network topology out there for you so that you can have a really good overview of not only all the devices that are in your network, but how they're physically connected to that network. And then lastly, we talk a, a, about security and awareness. You know, Domotes is meant to be a NOC, a network operations center type tool 
not a SOC or security operations center tool. But what we do very effectively is we help you with a lot of the basis of uh, security frameworks through things like CIS control number one, which is about understanding what's on the network, CIS control number 12, which is being able to manage that network effectively and understand the topology. But also we help you with understanding when new devices show up on the network. We'll bring immediate awareness to that. And then we will also tell you which ports are available, which TCP based ports are available for um, managing the devices. But that also helps give you an understanding of security footprints on devices and where vulnerabilities may lie. So this is really what Domotes is about and how it gets uh, utilized by these different markets. Let's talk a little bit about how it works. Domotes is a cloud service. Um, we bring up like on this middle, middle column here that we have several or a couple different data centers, but we also have several nodes that are spread throughout the world. Um, we host on different data centers to comply with uh, privacy laws uh, such as GDPR in Europe, but also CCPA in California and other, um, there's other regulations that are out there. Um, we do, as I said, have other nodes or what we call tentacles that are throughout the world to help with uh, performance and making sure that when you need to make secure remote connectivity or be able to get uh, access to your system, you can do that very quickly. It is the cloud where all of our intelligence lies. Um, it is where commands, it is also where, as it says, you know, your, your data is stored and utilized um, in a very secure and encrypted way, by the way. There's another part that makes up this ecosystem, and that is the agent. There is a single network agent that resides on the network that you are scanning. That agent can come in the form of different types of software. It can either be run on a Windows machine, a Linux server. You can have it on things like Raspberry Pis. In fact, even if you have um, NAS drives, like through Synology or QNAP, you can go into their store and find a downloads agent as well. We have a lot of folks that will use us inside of virtual machines, like VMware, hypervisor-based systems. Uh, but there's also, you'll notice at the bottom, a cloud, uh, excuse me, a box that you can uh, purchase on Amazon. That box is available for around 130 US dollars, but it essentially is running our software through, uh, which is hosted on a Ubuntu core operating system. The nice thing about that box, if you choose to use it, is not only is the agent, just like all of these agents are proactively updated by Domodes, but in the case of the box, we're also proactively monitoring and uh, updating the Linux kernel in there because of the way we have that set up. This agent, regardless of how you host it, is constantly communicating with the cloud in a very secure and encrypted way. It is the agent that is receiving commands from that cloud that tells it when to scan, when to make certain connections. Um, the nice thing about the way our architecture is, is it's really a, um, it's a way that the, the, it is the agent that will make the secure connections out to the cloud. So you're not unnecessarily opening up firewalls, uh, firewall ports um, at, your, at your router modem firewall area. We use all standard protocols for that. Once that connection is established, there is then the application, right? So this is what we call the Domo's front end. You have a couple ways in which you can see the data. You can use either a, a web-based app, so your favorite browser on your PC or laptop, you also have the ability to uh, see our data through a desktop application that's available through Windows and Mac. Well, I'll be showing the desktop app today because it is, I think, a little bit faster. Um, it has some capabilities as well that you may like. But you also have, and a lot of people don't realize this, but a mobile app. So whether you're dealing with iOS or Android, you can download the Domotes application and get data right from your phone. This is also how you can receive push notifications when there may be something going wrong in the system. So it is these three components, right? The agent, the cloud, and then the application itself that really makes up how Domotes works. And you'll see that today. Let's talk a little bit about deployment and how um, when you activate an agent, what happens here. You'll recall that um, you know, the cloud is just sitting out there. That is where you create an account, right? With your username and password that we'll talk about here in a minute. The way you activate an agent is once you have installed it, um, you can get into that agent, put in your username and password. Once you do that, 
the agent starts to automatically take over and do um, a scanning of the networks. You'll notice that when you activate that agent, the very first thing that it does is it checks in with the cloud to see if there are any updates that it needs to do with it. But once those updates are complete, which generally they're extremely fast within just a, a couple minutes if updates are needed, the agent will then start to scan the network and start reporting data up into uh, your account. We start to look for what does the network infrastructure look like? You know, are there workstations that are out there? We'll start to interrogate things like UPSs, printers, right, PDUs, right, power distribution units, to see what drivers we have available for this. Ultimately, what we're doing, and you'll see this in the demo, is we're really trying to look at the network infrastructure, right, the wireless access points, the switches, the routers, the firewalls, so we can start to build out that topology. In some cases, you may need to, in fact, many cases, you need to make sure that the credentials right, for SNMP on that network infrastructure are made available to the agent, so that way it can interrogate it further, and you'll see why that is here in a minute. The beauty of it is that it's extremely fast and extremely easy. We get a lot of questions on how we're scanning the network, right? And then how we get to this network topology. Well, first off, we're doing ARP scans, right? These are layer two scans using standard ethernet based protocols to uh, find and discover all of the devices. We use a massive database of over 30 billion devices um, and, and algorithms to classify these devices by make, model, and type. So it is that layer two ARP scanning that gives us our first set of data. Of course, we go to layer three and we start looking at IP address information, as well as the application layers within the OSI model to understand um, more information about these devices. We're looking for things like ZeroConf, NetBIOS, any Bonjour, right, SNMP scans. So we look at all of that to aggregate this information. We get a lot of question on the type of networks that we support. I will tell you that a Domotes agent by default will scan up to a layer, uh, excuse me, a CIDR of slash 22, which gives us up to 1,024 devices. Um, you can set up the agent to look at multiple networks, okay? So if you have VLANs, right, or network interface cards on your host, Domotes will automatically scan those de different network interfaces. You can set up for subnet scanning, and we'll talk about that. But I also want to point out that if you have if you are dealing with or you have a larger network, such as a slash 16, domotes can be configured to do that. That's just done through our enterprise packages. If you want to get more details about that, please reach out to support at domotes.com. When we talk about attached networks, we're really talking about layer two type networks. When we talk about subnets, we're looking at layer three. Domotes primarily wants to scan networks at a layer two level or looking at the VLANs. This is where we extract MAC addresses. This is where we can enrich and classify data. If we are only scanning at a subnet level, we're only providing you with IP address information. We can still check online offline status. We can still make remote connectivity, but it's important to note that there is a difference between what we call an attached network and what we call a routed subnet or a routed network. And then we're going to show you also how we can look even beyond our network and look at external hosts. So what is Domotes really about? Well, it's fundamentally a tool for you. It's there to provide operational efficiency, right? Help you be more efficient on your day-to-day -day, um, life. But we're also there to help provide proactive monitoring. I often use the phrase, we want you to look like a hero. I want you to know that there's an issue on one of your client's networks before you get a phone call from a customer saying that something is broken. For us, right, having that proactive awareness of what's going on in the network is really what helps you fulfill the SLAs and helps keep you um, or keep your customers coming back to you. And as I said, makes you look like a hero. But if we can do that while also lowering your costs, making it easier for you to eliminate truck rolls or minimize truck rolls or on-site support, we think that really helps you with your efficiency. Let's talk about the teams a little bit. You may have seen this already when you logged into Um, You, When you created the account in the very beginning, which I suspect it's the reason that you're here, when you created that account, you became the team master. Okay, so that account was uh, the person who is absolutely in charge of your account. Within your account, you can add team members. The difference between a team master and a team member really lies in the fact that 
Um, a team master is the one who can add team members or field operators. These are the different user types. But the team master is also the one that deals with any billing or adding credit card into the account. Um, other than that, the team master and team members are essentially the same. They can add agents, they can remove agents, they can uh, see all of the data associated with agents that are out there. The difference between a field operator and a team member has to do with which agents can be accessed. So if you have, just like in this picture, right, if we have a total of eight agents out there, you can assign a field operator to very specific agents. In this case, they don't have any agents, but if you hit this edit button, you could add any one of those agent, eight agents to um, their name, which would then give them access to do this, uh, to, to manage your customers. Why would you do this? The reason you'd want to do this is maybe you have important customers where you have a certain um, uh, team members or field operators that should have specific visibility into those sites. Maybe you want to limit exposure on certain sites. In some cases, we also have uh, service providers that will provide their customers with access to the sites that they care about. And you'd want to use something like a field operator in that case, so that way they have visibility to the agents that are theirs and not necessarily agents that are others uh, or owned by other companies. So that just gives you some insight into team management. As it says, you know, for security reasons, we highly recommend that you take advantage of things like 2FA. Maybe you're using something like a single sign-on service for identif identification management. Um, please, uh, please leverage that and you'll see some of that in our demo. Last thing I want to talk about before we get into the demo is licensing. This often comes up, so it's why I wanted to make a slide specific to this. But um, when you activate an agent, you are paying for uh, that agent. It is depending on where you are, right? 21 US dollars, 21 pounds, 21 euros, right? depending on where you are in the world. But that is for that agent to be active. You can look at multiple um, VLANs, multiple subnets, right? You can look at um, you know hundreds of devices on these networks without any issues, right? The um, the way in which it gets activated, and this is important to note, if you are on a trial right now, your agents that you activate after that trial become active on the the 15th day, right? The day after your your trial, and that becomes your billing date. One thing to point out, when you activate an agent within your billing cycle, you will be charged for that agent during that month, and you will be charged for the agent going forward, right, into the next month on your billing date. So just be aware of that. We always bill um, in advance for these systems, and therefore some people get a little bit confused when they see uh, their first bill, really it's their second bill, where it looks like an agent is charged twice. That's not really the case. It's just being charged for the, the time that you activated it, as well as the next month going forward. You can see all the information about um, your licensing and your script subscriptions inside portal.downloads.com. With all that being said, let's take a look at how Domotes actu actually works. Oh, look at that. I was already in a page there. Um, so I'm looking at the desktop application here. Um, this desktop application, I'm running on a Mac. So there's some nuances there with a the Mac versus Windows, but uh, nothing too difficult. There are three different types of pages that we have within our application, whether you're using a browser or, or the desktop app. You'll see the Site Explorer page here on the left. The Site Explorer really gives you um, awareness of all the sites that you're having. This is kind of a, a, a more of a knock-like view. You get a quick and easy status to see um, of the sites that I care about in a particular region, which ones are up, which ones are down, which ones may be in a troubled state through simple red, yellow, green type status. We're gonna talk more, especially in the 201 class about the inventory page. Right, this is where you can start to manage all of your organizations. You can manage your sites that you have, and you can manage the devices within each um, 
each one of your sites. This is where you start to get into the multi-tenant view. We'll also talk in the 201 about these monitoring dashboards page. The monitoring, monitoring dashboards are extremely powerful because not only can you bring in, say, specific uh, sites or specific devices into an individual table, you can look at, um, well, I should say you can customize these tables to look at the not only the, the data that you want, but also look at it across all of your, your customers. So this is a very, very strong and powerful multi-tenant view um, that you have. And you, you'll, we'll talk about how you can set up different dashboards based on what you care about, whether it's specific device information or whether it's specific sensors within those devices. For the bulk of the 101, I really want to focus on the Sites Explorer page and how we look there. So when I dive into a specific site, okay, you'll see that this site has some, it's in a quote unquote troubled state because I have some important devices that are offline. For this demo and lab, I'm not concerned about that, but we'll talk about how we get there. When we first activate an agent, the very first thing that we do is, as I said, we will start to discover all of the devices that are associated uh, with this network. Okay, we're gonna to try to bring awareness to everything that's out there. Okay, when we do that, um, we are, let's just pull up, uh, we can just look at this camera here. So when we discover all of the MAC addresses that are out there, we're going to try to classify it, like we said, by make, model, and type. Under the device properties page here, okay, the info page, you can scroll down and see exactly what we discovered about this device. We'll, of course, look at the MAC address and provide that. But if there's any application-based protocols that are there, the IP address, we're going to discover all that. During that process, it's when we're going to try to um, highlight the properties of this system, at least from our perspective. If at any point you want to change this, if you want to give this system a device-friendly name, compared to what we give it, or you want to improve the model number, if that's something you want to do, you can edit any of that information here. And this is really how you can start to um, align on what it is you care about within your systems, okay? Um, I highly recommend that you guys come up with a process by which you name kind of a, a nomenclature that you should use for all the devices that are out there but uh, this is just the start of some of the properties that you can see here. We'll show later how you can change properties um, within the inventory page at a much larger level as well. When we discover devices after we've done classifying, we also look at what connections, right, which ports are available for management of these devices. On this particular, um, this is a security camera, in this particular camera, we just see that port 80 is available, but we bring that to your attention. I will point out at this juncture that you can create custom connections. If you know that there is a particular port uh, for Telnet or for SSH that's maybe on something that we haven't discovered, right? you can create those custom connections here. You can even open up what we call a TCP tunnel to a particular device if you need to use third-party software to create connections. Domotes is automatically scanning for these types of ports and available, especially across common ports that are used. Things like uh, web-based ports, whether they're secure or not, Telnet, SSH. We'll look for remote desktop on PCs and laptops as well. So Domotes is trying to actively do that in the background. I mentioned before that as we discover all of these devices, we also try to look for um, manage switch infrastructure so that we can ultimately build out a topology map. Um, you'll notice that there's a break here between this router and this primary switch. The reason being is because we've been playing with this network and um, we're messing around with some of the connections and different types of routers that are in here going from you know standard routers to open WRT and so that's why this looks broken but generally you would have connections to these systems. When we discover managed switches, we'll look at just this first switch here. Um, one of the things, as I mentioned, you need to make sure that SNMP authentication is enabled. If you know or if you have changed the community strings from being public and private on V2, maybe you're using V3, 
you can um, select that and then apply that. One of the things you can do as well is if you're using common community strings or authentications across all the devices, you can push that immediately across all devices just in one um, easy click of a button. Once we have this information, we're going to interrogate the devices and we're going to start to present information like how the different systems or how the different devices within the network are connected to the switches. We're going to interrogate um, the switch and look for um, how much bandwidth is coming across each individual port. We're going to look for errors and packets being discarded as um, appropriate. And we're also going to look at average information, right, consumption. Uh, one thing I want to point out for you, those of you that are familiar with um, services like PRTG or Logic Monitor, um, essentially Domotes is taking about 15 different sensors for every single port on a switch. And we're presenting that data to you all within that $21 a month. Why do I bring this up? Well, Domotes is extremely cost effective when it comes to grabbing or accessing all of that data. We're looking at power consumption. In fact, you have the ability to power cycle a device if you want to do that through Domotes. I won't turn this camera off, but if it's a PoE-based device, you can do that here. So we, I show this to you because this is an important part of what Domotes is doing for you when it comes to the network monitoring and the network management. We'll also look at wireless access points. So in this particular case, I'm using Ruckus, but if you're using Meraki, using Ubiquity, you get the same type of functionality, even if it is a cloud-based control system. You do have to, of course, give it access and unlock it, but once you do that, we can see all sorts of information about wireless access points, such as how the system is being used, what its memory consumption is, CPU utilization. We'll look at the different radios. We'll look at noise floors, right? So if you're having issues with um, connectivity problems on the wireless side, we're gonna extract that information from uh, the controllers and bring that up. We're even gonna show you which devices are connected to which SSIDs and on which radios. We're gonna show you their individual signal strength um, as seen by the wireless access point and present that information to you as well through Domos. And a lot of this is really getting to the point where we're helping you with the diagnostic side of what's going on here. I think this is probably enough um, in talking about how we um, discover devices, how we start to interrogate the systems, let me just check my notes to make sure that I covered some of the good details here on the activation. I think so. Um, before we, oh, there's a couple things I, I do want to address. And it actually has to do with um, your account side of things. So, you activated the account, right? We started discovering all the devices. We started building out a network topology. One of the things that you probably should be aware of is on the left-hand side, your account tab. So while Domotes is um, running in the background and really to get kind of a, of course it depends on the size of the network, but to get a overview of all the devices and all of their connectivity, um, it takes anywhere from five to 15 minutes. It just depends on how many devices you have and how many networks we're scanning. This is a good point to, or a time when it's scanning, especially that first network, to go look at your team management, go look at some of the branding capabilities. So let me address some of that. Let's first go to the team management because we talked about team members and field operators. When you go into either portal.demos.com or through the desktop app, if you click on your account and team management, it takes you right into this area where you can see who are team members who are field operators. You can create team members. One thing that's important to note is that you can only have, Domotes will only recognize um, users by email addresses. So if somebody already has an email address in an account, um, they, if they're associated with a different team, or even if they're associated as a field operator, you can't add them as a team member. So you have to have unique email addresses in these environments. We've talked about the differences between these, so I don't wanna go in great detail there, but I do wanna make sure you understand from an authentication and two-factor, uh, 2FA point of view, right? From an identity management 2FA point of view, how you set that up. First of all, within each 
device or within each device, within each person or user, you can uh, set out whether 2FA is mandatory or not. Um, if you have um, SSO, right, single sign-on services, if you go to your account page on the far right, you'll see that this is where you can enable 2FA for your account, right? So that way you have it, or you can set up as a team master, right? The SAML and single sign-on services. Um, you see that we have identity providers like Okta, Azure, JumpCloud, Evo here already, but I will tell you that we use standard SAML 2.0. And if you have a particular service that you utilize that aren't these, um, reach out to our support team and they can talk about how you can set that up uh, for your setup or environment. I'll mention here as well, you know, while your um, agent is scanning, you can come in here and set up information on your company. Yeah, you can set up, if you're the team master, you'll see how you can set up your uh, payment methods or invoices. Um, you can put in your account information and details here. The reason you would set up that same information under branding is because you may notice you can set your company logo up. Uh, you can set up your contact information. When we get to the 201 and we talk about reporting and logging, um, when you generate reports, it is your company information that gets sent within those reports in case you want to provide those details to your clients. So that's why that information is important. You'll also notice under um, your Sites Explorer page or even under the inventory dashboard, you know, your logo can show up here. This can be good. A lot of people use this for uh, marketing purposes. You know, if they have this dashboard up on the screen and people or their clients want to know, how are you monitoring and managing my systems, right? How are you looking for proactively knowing whether a system is down? this page becomes really helpful for that. Okay, those are the uh, two things that I wanted to touch on here, which was really setting up your account and making sure you understand how to do the SAML and SSO stuff. Let us dive into alerts and alerting, because once we have discovered all of these devices on the network, you know the next thing that you may wanna do is start setting up alerts. The very first thing that I want you to do, by the way, is set up an alert on your agent itself. Why do I say that? Well, you need to know when that agent is active or not. One of the best ways to uh, check that the ISP, right, the internet service is running, is to set up this connection lost or recovered for the agent, for the network as a whole. How did I get there? And let's talk about the different types of, of alerts that are there. You can have network-based alerts, or you can have device-based alerts, which every single device on the network can have alerts associated to them. Within each type of alert, you can set up what we call personal alerts, which these are specific to the account that you're logged in as, or you can set up shared alerts. We're gonna talk in more detail about shared alerts in the 201. Um, I mostly wanna focus on getting you started with personal alerts today. But I will tell you that shared alerts, if you go under the alert settings tab here, shared alerts allow you to add specific contact channels through things like PSA tools, uh, messaging platforms like Slack or Microsoft Teams, or even just general email alerts. Um, these contact channels can be shared, right? You can do multiple contact channels within a given alert type. And then um, when you set these things up, you'll see that you can associate which types of events, whether it's a device-based event or a network-based event on these alerts. If you're wanting to get more um, involved with this now, I highly recommend you go to help.domotes.com or you view one of our 201 webinars in the past where we talk about how we set some of this up. So the two types of alerts are these personal alerts as well as the shared alerts. Again, going back to um, the Sites Explorer tab, going into an agent, you'll see this alert settings area where you can get to these. Let's go back and talk about setting up a personal alert on your network. When you go to the personal alert section, you'll see that you can either do a mobile or push notification to the Domeboats application on your um, iOS or Android device, or you can send an email off to the account you're logged in as. 
you can look at network alerts as being, you know, the, ag the agent itself has lost communications with the cloud, it can happen during a power outage, it can happen during the, the service provider going down. You also have specific types of alerts that are at a network level, which is if a new device is discovered on that network, you can set up an alert. If ports are opened at the firewall, right? So remember, Domotes is a cloud-based system and it's constantly communicating with the agent that you have activated. If we see ports getting opened at the firewall from the WAN side, looking back into the LAN, we can alert you to that. If you're utilizing something like UPnP, which is a fairly legacy technology, but if you are utilizing that and a port gets opened up by an UPnP server right, on a device or given to a device, we can alert you to that. So we look at those two things as really being security type issues, and we'll talk more about that in the 201, but be aware that you can set that up. And that really for us is a network um, type of event. If your public IP address changes, so if you have, um, redundant ISPs and you have a failover from your primary to the secondary, an IP address change will occur and we can alert you to that. But also if you just see LAN configuration changes on your network, we can alert you there. One of the things that, you know, often, um, you know, service providers who are concerned about network performance, um, let's just go talk about this now. Um, and I'll show you this, but we can alert you if your ISP speeds fall be below a certain threshold, okay, whether it's on your download or upload. So how do we do that? Well, you may have noticed under the agent dashboard that we have this network performance tab. When you click on this, you'll immediately be taken to this page that does speed tests. Domos will do speed tests once every six hours. Okay, we will um, use standard services like either FAST or MLAB. Um, I really like MLAB because I think that they do a really good job of analyzing not only the ISP, um, the, the kind of the local connection within your ISP, but they also go outside that network to uh, some different hosted university sites. So you get a real true speed of network performance. We do this every six hours. Like any speed test, we try to maximize that performance. I will say here at this point that um, the internet speed test and the values that you see here really depend on the host that you're using. Um, it depends on the ISP speed connection. In fact, I have a cable modem here, which is a lot of the reason you see this variability. But another thing you may have, uh, you may recall that at the beginning, I said we're doing different types of tests with different routers. And we put in a new, right here, we tested a, a new router which use some quality of service metrics. And you can see how well it stabilized some of the connections there. Um, and then we of course took it out and we're playing with the different routers. But these speed tests really depend on the environment that you're in, the host that the agent is sitting on, as well as external factors, right? How far are you away from the servers? All of this stuff is kind of described here in this section. That being said, this network performance tab really is a good indication as to whether things are up or not. Um, we get you downtime measurements, right? When a system actually goes down, we also provide a lot of information about uh, the ISP itself and what we're seeing, right? The, the public IP address, right? What are the different NICs or interfaces that we're, we're checking? So all this is really good data for you to have in your back pocket. And Domotes can alert on changes of any of those things, which is kind of how we got into this discussion. So those are personal alerts on the network side. Let's talk about setting up alerts on the device side. Um, any device that is discovered on that network or this network, you can set alerts to. Uh, let's go just for the fun of it, look at this primary switch that's out here. Um, within each device, you know, when I showed you the info and the connections tab, you also have this alerts tab. Just like before, you can set up shared and personal alerts, but let's assume you want to look at some personal alerts here. When you click the, the custom button, you can go in and set, you know, alerts for when the device goes up, when it goes down, if its IP address changes. The difference between a device going up and a device going down uh, versus a heartbeat lost. Let's talk about that. Um, Domotes is pinging. We're doing ICMP requests to each device out there. Each one of those pings or set of three pings is what we would consider to be a heartbeat. 
okay? Um, when we see three or more heartbeats get lost, that's when we would consider the device going down. Why is this important? Well, um, you really want to use the device goes down status to ensure that the device truly is down. If you do heartbeat loss on wireless connections, you will be getting alerts all day. So I strongly recommend that you utilize, you know, the goes up and goes down for checking status of devices. Um, heartbeats are really good for critical infrastructure systems and wired connections, but you really need to make sure that you understand how that heartbeat works versus a device goes down status. You can also check on sensors or services within each device. When we talk about TCP services, we're looking for hosted software, right? Running on ports within a device. Examples would be web pages running on port 80, RDP running on port 3389, Telnet running on ports 21 or 22, whatever that is. Um, you can set these services up and you can get alerts if those services go down for any reason. You also can set up SNMP sensors within um, each device. Here we've, you know, we have a sensor that we've already set up, which is uptime, right? If I wanted to configure uptime, if it, uh, you know, falls below a certain value, okay, I can set an alert. We can do this on any system. In fact, one of the things that I always like to look at, if we go to the devices tab here, we type, uh, guys, this is an SNMP based uh, network sensor. When we set up SNMP services, and by the way, we're going to talk in more details about this in the 201, but again, I just want to make you aware that if you do want to look at sensors, you can either look at what we call pre-configured sensors. So if we discover MIBs or sensors on a device, we can uh, bring that to your attention. You also can uh, come in here and manually add um, information. So because this is a temperature sensor, we can type the word temperature, we can add um, these specific OIDs to these devices. I already have it. So you can see that we've been mapping it for a little while and you can go look at variability of these things. Okay, so this is how the sensors work. And of course you can set thresholds on each of these. So at this point when the, the sensor got above 105 degrees Fahrenheit, we set we can set an alert. You can do all of that through this alerts page, right? Where, oops, let's go to the personal alerts where you can come here and set, um, you know, an SNMP value being either too high or uh, maybe being between a certain range, you can kick off an event, right? And trigger that alert. And in this case, we want to send an email whenever the humidity gets too high. One other thing that you can do with each device that's out there, and this becomes more of a diagnostic and troubleshooting setting, is that you can look at round trip delay essentially latency from the point of view of the agent. If your latency is increasing beyond a certain threshold or beyond an average or median that you care about, you can trigger an alert or an event. If you're getting a certain amount of packet loss, right, that's above a, a threshold that you care about, you can get um, an alert on that as well. We talked more about network diagnostics in the 201, but this is a very powerful tool to understand when there may be new devices showing up on a network that are causing uh, latency issues or causing uh, priority issues when it comes to data on your managed switches or even your wireless access points. So think about that as you're setting up these alerts. Okay. Uh, you have a good understanding of network alerts. I think I've shown you a little bit of details about uh, device-based alerts on the personal side. We'll talk about shared alerts in the 201. So I think from this point of view, we've covered alerts enough. Let's say let's take some time to talk about when an alert occurs, right? And you need to go in and manage that device or look at the system. How do you do that? Well, one of the things that's going to happen is you're going to get an alert, you know, a ticket may be getting raised in your PSA tool, um, which will tell you which system and which device is in a troubled state. Once you click on that link, once you log into this site, you can go either to the device itself that is causing that troubled state, or you can start to look at the remote connections and VPN tab if you want to get into that system. So in this case, so we'll, we'll use this switch as an example here. So we have all of these ways in which we can connect to this particular switch. 
So let's assume I need to come in here and do a reconfiguration of this switch. I can, from anywhere that I am, create a secure connection to that device. What it is doing right now when I create this connection is it's creating a secure URL that is only good for my laptop at my location. It now, and you can see that kind of hosted up here, even if you were to copy and paste that into your browser, it would not work for you. Um, when I type in the credentials, you'll see that I gain access directly to that page. Essentially what's happening is um, the Domo's agent is viewing that web page and then it's passing all of that information up through the cloud and back down into my desktop app or into my browser here that I now see. And now I can come in here and configure anything that I needed to do, right? If I need to go adjust VLANs, um, if I needed to go off and save configuration files, power cycle something, whatever, right? Maybe I need to do a firmware update to this system, right? Because it's, it's on an old version that has some uh, vulnerabilities. I can go do that at this point. Um, this is really good for managing individual devices quickly and easily. If I want to look at the network as a whole, I can turn the Domotes agent into a VPN host. If I were to open this tunnel, which I'm not going to do it now because we're on this webinar, but if I were to do this, it would give me a configuration file that I can then upload into something like Tunnel Blick on my Mac or OpenVPN, and I can create a secure connection. You guys are very familiar with VPNs, but essentially what this is doing, it's taking advantage of your Domotes credentials, right? Your username and password, and it's allowing you to make the secure connectivity over um, the Domotes infrastructure and essentially puts your laptop or your PC directly on that network, kind of giving it a, its own IP address in a secure manner. This is really good if you need to go in and do testing across multiple devices or go in and look at multiple systems that are out there. I do want to touch on a couple of key things, right? So this is this kind of gives you the overview of how you create a connection, right? How you can get in and manage devices. I'd like to point out just a few of the things that you may discover on your own um, at this point, and then we'll get into the 201 and get to any questions that we have. Um, a few of the things that we do that kind of differentiates Domotes. I will, let's um, actually, you know what? I'm gonna do this under the inventory dashboard just because it's easier to find devices. So some people are curious about how we manage or look at traditional endpoints. So PCs, laptops, and, and whatnot. So if I look at um, this virtual machine, couple of the things that we do. We're first and foremost going to discover the device on the network. But if you give us access, right, through the access manager, okay, so if you let us, if you unlock some of the OS monitoring or some of the SSH capabilities, right, what we have the ability to do is not only see that these machines are online, but if you go to the system tab, you'll see that we can pull out information like what is this device, right? What is its architecture? How is, what's the operating system? What are the version or build numbers that are on it? We can interrogate things like the physical memory or the logical um, disk information that's out there. And in fact, because this is a virtual machine and it's hosting, or it's a server and it's hosting multiple virtual machines, we can get a ton of data around the virtual machines themselves. And you can see that through this device itself, or you can bring this information into some of the monitoring tables. We also can look at things. I just take a, a simple example. Let's look at, I think if we look at these HP printers, let's, yeah, this one in this IoT lab should have data available to it. Um, you'll notice, in fact, if you go to um, the insights on the inventory, you'll know whether SNMP is unlocked or whether there's some configuration management that may be locked. You'll see some of that here. But on this, we can look at the SNMP tab. We can see, no, I don't like this one because it doesn't show as much information as I want. Let's go to, if we go to the brother printer that we have in this Draper office, I think we can see more details just because it's actually set up and configured. So yeah, 
when we look at um, printers, and this gets back into the SNMP monitoring capabilities with pre-configured sensors, you'll see that Domotes can discover um, systems that, um, where especially printers, NAS drives are great examples, virtual machines, where we can bring in a lot more information if we have those authentication credentials. So looking at stuff like, you know, the cyan um, levels, the black levels, right? Whether the drum is being utilized and how much utilization is there. All of this is information that Domotes can just bring in immediately through these pre-configured sensors. So keep that in mind. And again, you can show all of those details through your monitoring dashboards, or you can go in and set up individual alerts on the SNMP side for these um, this. I will also just show how, um, I think if we look at a Synology drive here, let's go back to this lab because I think it's set up there. Uh, da, 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 SNMP, yep, so we can get all sorts of disk information about NAS drives. We can look at uh, how they're partitioned in volumes. We can even get into some of the system details, which you can do all of this um, even on Cisco switches or um, systems where OIDs are present for this. A lot of times we see this getting utilized too to make sure that if a, uh, an update is available on a system, again, it's about how can we help you um, uh, manage your security footprints, right? How can we help you with cyber good cyber hygiene? Right? Domotes helps you with this as well. Speaking of, I mentioned Cisco. Let's go talk about Cisco because one of the things that we get a lot of questions on um, with uh, monitoring and managing the network infrastructure is what can we do with respect to um, configuration files? Well, if you go to, this is a Cisco switch that's out here. Domotes will, um, when, again, when we have the authentication credentials, will look at the running configuration of every switch. We will compare it to the startup configuration of these systems and we will alert you whenever there is a misalignment between those two or if the uh, configuration files have changed for whatever reason. You have the ability then to go in and compare the current configuration file with a previously backed up configuration file just to see what has changed. This is a great way to validate that the network infrastructure itself is running and operating as you would expect. I think the fact that you can get alerts on these, whether it's you know a misalignment between the running and the startup configuration, or just when a change happened, is an extremely powerful tool. And you can do that alert through a push notification or through a shared alert, like we talked about um, before. Okay, I am at my 50-minute mark. I want to go and talk briefly about what we're going to be doing in the 201. I also want to say while I'm going over this, hey Giancarlo be looking at what questions we have so we can address those um, right after I go through this quickly. Um, in the 201, we're going to go into a little bit more advanced topics, right? Still some of the basics, but things you would uh, probably do after you get familiar with Domotes and how it works. Things like reporting and logging. We'll talk a little bit more about network diagnostics. I touched on it today so you can at least get a taste of it but we'll look at how you can utilize those. And of course, we'll go into that network security tab that's under each agent. And then we branch into how you can monitor all of your devices, as well as agents that are out there uh, through that inventory tab and really through the monitoring dashboards. We'll, we'll go into how you set those things up. We'll also touch on some more of the advanced topics like actually setting up device sensors, when you would use SNMP and when you'd use TCP. We'll talk about these configuring of shared alerts, but then we'll also talk about how you can snooze alerts and how you can consolidate alerts into a single file that you get on a, a timely basis. And then one thing that um, has been a topic that we felt was important is when it comes to integrations, Domotes is proud to say that we have thousands of integrations across hardware and software services. Um, our team has spent a lot of time enabling that. So we'll touch on some of the more uh, fundamental ones like connecting uh, cloud-based solutions through for services like Meraki or Ubiquities Unify into Domotes. And then we'll also talk about how you can take all of this information that we have and connect it to different documentation services, whether it's things like IT Glue or maybe you're doing data aggregation systems like LionGuard and you want to put all of this network information in there. 
So with that being said, Giancarlo, tell me what type of questions we got. And um, if I need to bring up Domos again to answer some of these, let's do it. Very, very good, GPS. Uh, I have a couple of questions. One is a generic about the uh, webinar. And it always, uh, there is always somebody asking if we are going to send a link to this recorded session. And the answer is, uh, of course, yes. So at the end of the presentation of the webinar, just the time of editing uh, the video, you will receive uh, an email with a link to the recorded session. Yeah. Uh, sure. And another question is more generic on the remote connection. And this comes from uh, Justin uh, asking uh, if, uh, while speaking about remote connection, if Domots also works uh, with Splash Top. <laughs> and yeah. yeah um, so uh, the answer is no, we don't require Splash Top to do remote connection. The remote connection that Domots allows you to create are basically um, based on pure TCP reverse tunnel on, on top of SSL SSH. So Domus creates a reverse secure tunnel to our cloud. And through this cloud, the, through this tunnel, you can have any protocol that you want. Now, natively, we do uh, wrap the ra remote desktop protocol from Windows and allows you to do a remote connection to a Windows machine without opening and exposing the, the RDP protocol on the internet, basically. So the tunnel starts from inside the network. Um, if you want to be, I have one agent with a Windows machine. Yeah, I was, I was actually thinking, I think this, uh, one of these machines I thought I had, um, I had RDP open where we can create a, a Windows remote desktop section. Correct. Um, and but I would also point out, James uh, bring or excuse me, Justin brings up a really good um, question. You know, Splash Top is really meant to help you connect directly into PCs, laptops, and servers. And there's an individual agent that is hosted on each one of those PCs and laptops. To your point, Giancarlo, and you said this, right? We have a single network agent that is trying to create um, reverse SSH type tunnels two devices right through our cloud so it's a little bit of a different architecture and really domo should be utilized for connecting onto individual devices and iot systems that are on the network or the network infrastructure itself whereas splash top can be utilized for um, managing a pc um, at an individual level right if you need desktop access to that yeah 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 that's very correct statement to be uh, those were the couple of questions I wanted to mainly cover. Um, you anticipate the 201 session, JP, in yeah. two weeks. Um, and you have also anticipated that we are continuously improving and adding new functionality to, to our platform. So stay tuned because um, we do a continuous deployment. JP knows what I'm talking about which means that every single week and probably twice per week, we bring new feature, new improvement to the platform. Uh, we announce those features once per month. So every month we have a, a kind of newsletter, uh, which links to the release notes, the public release notes, with all the features that we add month by month. Um, this is available also on the help center. So if you go on the guide, user guide or help.downloads.com, there is a session with all the release notes and you can see uh, the pace of development uh, from our engineering team and how the feature has been added uh, month after month. Yeah, I meant to, uh, I'm glad you said that Giancarlo, I wanted to bring that up. Um, this help center, right, help.downloads.com is extremely powerful. Um, and I would encourage you, if any of you are starting right now, just take advantage of these onboarding guides. Um, and look at how to get things set up. A lot of that is kind of what I covered in this 101, but if, you, if you're more of a visual learner or you want to read instead, uh, these can be helpful there. But also, if you kind of want to just jump ahead and start looking at integrations, right? We have a lot of information about that on help.domoks.com. Yep, yep, very good point. Yep, good. Well, I think, I think that's enough for today. You know, Giancarlo, there are actually 301 topics that we could mention to people like, you know, APIs, 
and you know other more advanced uh, systems. In fact, I started to show the integrations. People may see this custom integrations, and you, know, you can get crazy with Domotes, and you can start creating your own drivers based on JavaScript. So there's a lot of power that we provided in Domotes. Hopefully, with this 101 training, you guys have gotten kind of a, a, a taste of what the capabilities are, and you can get started. If you have any um, issues with your account, if you have any issues with installing um, an agent or your application, please reach out to support at domos.com. Our team is awesome. They're standing by and they can help get any issues fixed quickly. So thank you very much, Giancarlo. Thanks for um, asking some of those questions and monitoring all of those other questions in the background. I do appreciate it. And we look forward to seeing you on the 201 and talking to you guys soon. Thanks. Thank Thanks a lot, JB. Thank you, guys.